got you. You like the flatworm, huh, buddy? One of my favorite colors in the flatworm, the old smelt on a hover rig. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. I am out on my local river and we've got very, very dirty water conditions. We got a ton of rain last week, the river came way up and then they have sucked it dry this week to the point where it's fallen several feet. And what that's done is it's just completely just muddied up the water. There's, it's almost to the point of like rolling mud. There's a couple inches of visibility. And uh, I'm out here fishing a finesse presentation, my own core tackle hover rig. And I probably would get a lot of people thinking that's pretty crazy considering recently I've done a lot of videos talking about finesse fishing and uh, you know downsizing baits and in those videos I've even mentioned how you can finesse fish in muddy water. So I've had a lot of people reach out to me and say hey can you do a video can you talk to us a little bit more about finesse fishing in muddy water scenarios. So I figured today would be a good time to do it and the <sighs> What is that little guy? Uh, the first thing I just want to point out though is you really shouldn't change a whole lot. Meaning, other than your bait of choice, you shouldn't necessarily change where you're fishing. So a lot of people would go down this bank and say, I've got to flip a jig, I've got to throw a big square bill. I've got to do something to get those fish to trigger you know, them to bite because they can't see my bait. Well, the reality is these, ooh, these fish. The reality is these fish know that your bait is there. I mean, they feed in muddy water all the time. It's not something that is unusual for them. You know, if they couldn't eat in dirty water, they'd all be starving to death, right? And a lot of times I feel like the more healthy fish are in the dirty water. And I think it's because they use the dirty water to their advantage. If they're not moving, the smaller fish that they're feeding on may not know they're there, but they can feel those fish moving. So they know that there's bait fish there and they use it to their advantage. So the first thing I want to point out is it's a complete myth that you cannot finesse fish in muddy water. 100% you can do it. I do think there's a couple of things that you need to recognize though when you're doing it. The first, for me, is all about my uh, setup. So generally speaking, I'm throwing here, this is a 364 ounce core tackle hover rig with a four and a quarter inch smelt colored uh, Berkeley Max Scent flatworm. So it's a really light presentation. The first thing, generally in clear water, I would be throwing this on six or eight pound tests. I've actually got it on 12 pound tests right now because they, I don't feel as concerned that they're gonna be line shy. So that's the first thing. Second thing is my rod and reel presentation. I'm gonna throw it on a little stiffer rod and reel because again, I've got a little heavier line. I don't need a super light action rod. So this is actually a two power. So it's a light medium power. And from that standpoint, that's a little bit more unusual for me. I would generally be throwing this on a medium light. So that's the first thing. But the second thing is gonna come down to the fish location. I do think generally speaking, the fish are tighter to cover in muddy water. I don't think they're necessarily roaming as much. So I do think you wanna make more precise casts at specific targets. So I've got a straight bank here. I'm not that interested in it. Maybe the overhanging tree, maybe the tree that's about potentially some roots that are in it right up there but i'm going to be more looking at targets like these docks or a lay down tree something along those lines and consider picking them apart now i'm on a body of water that's primarily smallmouth they don't really generally like lay down trees if they're big and branchy like largemouth do they would much rather be on a on a stump or a straight pole timber so i passed up some stuff there that i'm not as interested in if i had large mouth i would definitely be working that more small mouth do really like to use docks in this lake and a lot of northern lakes so i'm gonna pick these apart a little bit uh, another thing in muddy water that i really like to do is 
use a lighter weight. I like a much slower falling bait. I think it helps the fish dial in on that bait as it's falling. So if I use a really fast fall, the bait gets to the bottom quicker. And that's generally not as good in my opinion. You want, their, you want movement in your bait to create vibration, to create sound that those fish can key in on. And therefore I like a much lighter weight. Now, the one thing I will say is I like to use tungsten if I'm using an exposed weight. Now, in this case, the hover rig has an internal weight, so I'm not that concerned about it. But if I was throwing a jig head or a Texas rig, I would definitely be throwing tungsten because when it hits the bottom, it generally creates a little bit more sound, which is a good thing to generating strikes in muddy water. But in my opinion, it's very much a myth that you can't catch them in muddy water using finesse tactics. I will say one tip that I like to do when I'm going down a bank like this, throwing a light presentation is I really don't mind making more of an entry, making a little bit more of a splash. Now, these are finesse baits, so they're not gonna create a huge uh, explosion when they enter the water, but I do think that little plop sound can actually give the fish something to key in on, and therefore they can find my bait. Uh, you know, if I were making a really stealthy presentation, there would be no sound. Now, if I were flipping to a stump or to, you know, something particular, at that point, yep, I'm okay still making a, a much smoother presentation into the water. Uh, but if I'm just going down the bank, open water, I actually like to make a little bit more sound on, on entry into the water because if there is a fish cruising, they're gonna be able to, to locate my bait a little bit better. Um, just another, another tip that I really like when I'm fishing dirtier water, but you don't necessarily have to be throwing big baits. Now I will say I like to throw baits that do have a little bit of motion in them, a little bit of movement in dirtier water. So something like the, uh, Berkeley little super trooper. So it's a little craw bait, but it's got flappers instead of just the standard little trooper, which has just straight craws that can make a difference. I, you know, in this case, the core tackle hover rig actually imparts a little tail kick into the flatworm. So I'm getting a little vibration out of it from that standpoint, but I still like to use something that has a little bit more motion in it, a little bit more vibration in it than maybe your standard flatworm, uh, flat tailed worm, or, you know, something that doesn't create much motion at all. But it is very much a myth. You know, it's one thing, you know, when I was fishing Lake Eufaula, there was uh, one creek I was fishing that was about as muddy a water as you can get. I mean, just completely mud. And, you know, I'm going down the bank and there was, I actually came to a place where there was an access point where there was a shore fisherman. And he was throwing a weightless wacky rig, a black and blue wacky rig. And he caught two fish, you know, as I was coming down the bank. And, you know, it was the conditions where you wouldn't necessarily expect it, but I think it was kind of normal for him being that, you know, that's the water color that he fishes all the time. So it was just standard. I'm gonna go throw a Cinco, but I think a lot of people that aren't familiar with that really dark water would think he was crazy for doing it. Now I will say, I do like to throw darker colors again. You know, he was throwing a black and blue one. In this case, you know, generally I like to throw black and, a dark color, black and blue or black, or I like to go with a white color bait. And that's what the smelt has, a very nice white belly on it. And again, you know, the forage that I'm mimicking in this lake are what we call emerald shiners. So they're about the same size as, the, as this bait. They are kind of a lighter colored, um, you know, bait fish. So I think it's doing a good job, but generally I like to go with a light color or I like to go with a dark color when fishing dark water. So I'm not gonna be throwing my watermelons and kind of hues like that. So it's, it's the same approach you would be doing if you were fishing muddy water with your power fishing techniques, you're just gonna downsize. But these, these fish are, they are made to feed in all water conditions. You know, a, a good example of this is Again, that last tournament I fished on uh, Lake of the Ozarks where I talked about catching a blind bass. I mean, his two eyeballs were pretty much missing and he was still able to find my jig. 
I mean, that's the same as fishing in muddy water. You know, if they can't see it, they're okay with that. I think more often than not, this is something that anglers put on themselves to kind of psych themselves out or make, make them feel better about the, the decision that they've made, whether that's the fish, you know, clear water or what. But I think a lot of times it's just in our heads. But we've caught a bunch of them today. I mean, nothing special, a lot of little fish, but it's been a fun, a fun little bit. You know, I've only been able to be out for a couple of hours. This is kind of my routine while the kids are in school. I drop them off and then I got to pick up my little guy Duke from preschool at uh, 1130. So I got to be off the water. I get to fish from about nine to 11. And uh, I just figured I'd swing over the lake and got greeted with some muddy conditions, which I'm okay with. So anyways, let's see if we can catch a couple and uh, I'll let you ride along with me and I'll point out a few other muddy water tips. I think another reason people feel like finesse fishing in muddy water may not be a great idea is because a lot of times people like to finesse fish offshore and the offshore bite generally is not as good when talking about uh, finesse fishing in muddy water and, and a big part of that is the a larger population of the fish stay shallow when you've got muddy water conditions and then at the same time, they're generally just gonna be shallower. So even if they're offshore, maybe and when the lake is clear, they're in 20 foot, but when it's real muddy, a lot of times they'll only be in 10 foot of water is kind of the deepest range they'll go. So it's something to, just to pay attention to, but a lot of times people like to throw their drop shots and shaky heads and Ned rigs and stuff like that when you're talking about being more offshore. But when a good population of the fish are shallow, they should just go shallow and start throwing a lot of those same uh, finesse presentations. It's still something that they can catch them in. They just need to recognize that the fish might not be as deep when that happens. Now it doesn't, that's not always the case, but it definitely does come into play. Uh, especially in places like rivers, a lot of times you don't find the fish much deeper than six, eight feet of water. So I think a lot of times, again, it's just a matter of like people psych themselves out from throwing finesse presentations with the, uh, you know, they're in the muddy water, but you, you can't let it get to your head. You just got to go out and try it and you'll find that the fish will find your bait. They are completely built to do this <laughs> they they understand it and i think a lot of times again in it like just like in clear water you can really increase your odds and have a better day on the water by fishing finesse presentations especially if you're going down a bank that was just beaten by a bunch of people that were throwing spinner baits and square bills and jigs you know those fish get pressured just like they do in clear water and there's only one way for you to get confidence in doing it, and that's to go out and do it. And I think you'll recognize that you're good. I mean, we're so shallow, the motor's hitting bottom, and I can't even tell right here. So I think a lot of people just wouldn't even consider fishing as shallow as they get 
in, in your muddy water conditions, but the fish will get up into inches. Anyways, I hope uh, I hope this gives you a little bit of confidence to throw a lot of your same baits, you know, in those same finesse type areas. You just might want to throw maybe a little bit heavier tackle than you would normally do it. You might want to make sure your baits have a little bit of vibration included into them. Make sure the colors are appropriate for your dark water. And I think you'll find that you can have pretty good success fishing in the muddy stuff so guys if you enjoyed this hit the like button subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and if you've got a secret muddy water finesse bait that you like to throw put it in the comment section so that the rest of us can learn from you guys as well I think uh, there's a lot of people that like to fish Oklahoma that are not afraid to throw finesse stuff in the mud and it's just because they grew up with it. And I think that's one of the reasons I feel comfortable doing it too. I fish a lot of rivers and the rivers get muddy, but they hold fish and you can catch them on finesse. All right, guys, I'm going to get back to it. Thanks for watching. Check in tomorrow.